walk us through how you got from where you, that to where you are now, and how would you now explain it to a new person? Well, I, w- I wouldn't explain all the history and I wouldn't right. explain all the methodologies because none of the methodologies that you w- will get exposed to when you first when you first Google or look up systems thinking, most of what you'll get exposed to has no validity whatsoever. And we have valid studies that show that. Yeah. So it's a little bit, the way that I would say it is, it's a little bit like the Wild West. You know, it's like the, the probability that you're going to get sold snake oil is extremely high. And that's very frustrating for people. And it's, it's probably one of the things that frustrates me most about the field is that a new person to the field who simply wants to make their life better, who wants to be able to do something capably and have a, develop a competency, mm-hmm. what I call it, you know, can do, they can do something, mm-hmm. right, that they couldn't do before. They don't want to know the history so that they can talk about it at cocktail parties and, and you know, name drop Bertalanfi and Bogdanoff and, you know, uh, you know, all these different people. Yeah, yeah. What they want to do is be able to do something that they couldn't do. Yeah. And I think, like the Wild West, the probability of you getting sold snake oil is extremely high. The probability of you getting some elixir Mm -hmm. that doesn't do anything. Doesn't actually fix it. That doesn't actually teach you anything or get you anywhere or get you the ability to do something that other people can't do or that you couldn't do before. Yeah. The, the probability is very high. And we, we have a lot of people in training camp that and a lot of our case studies show, you know, people went to this place or that place yeah. and, you know, famous places tried in stuff, systems thing yeah. and tried stuff, got absolutely nowhere yeah. and then came to training camp and they were like, oh, my God, this is actually re- not only really simple, like really simple, yeah. but really effective. And I can do things that I couldn't do, you know, right. which is to me should be the measure. Yeah. But where we where we typically start is for you to understand systems thinking, you 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 newbie, uh-huh. you know, you're coming new to it. You, you've got to read this and that and you know, it's all about reading. And I just think it's all about doing. It's all about practicing and doing. Like if you're going to play basketball, I'm not going to start you off with reading a book on basketball. No. I'm not going to ha- start you off with reading the history of music in order for you to learn to play the guitar. Yeah. I'm going to get you practicing how to tune a guitar and then how to, you know, do some chords. Right. So where is that? I mean, that that's that's sort of a different way of thinking about it. It's it's more about can do than than what I would call concept cramming. Okay. So concept cramming, you mean like I used to do concept cramming as a student, like just get sure. as much in, memorize it, test it, re- spit it back out, just take in more and more information. I think this is not just affecting systems thinking. I, I think it yeah. affects almost every realm. If you if you just look at in high school, for example, when you go to an advanced level, what do they do? They just cram more concepts into it. When you have a regular economics course versus an AP economics, the AP economics course is just more concept, more stuff. Yeah. Right, more stuff to cover. More, yeah. they co- they cover more stuff. It's like we sometimes call it the coverage curriculum because yeah. you cover more stuff. It doesn't mean the students learn more stuff. Right. It just means more stuff is covered. Right. And I think this idea of concept cramming, you know, where I mean, take the PhD for example. You know, you concept cram for three years. Yeah. Right. That's and and that's just part of the hazing of, yes. of doing a PhD. So we have this wrong mental model of how actual skills are formed and the science tells us exactly how to how to build skills the science is really clear that practice repetition Mm -hmm. burning the neurons is the best way to to create skills and if we want expertise the science tells us that the, the the way to build true expertise is to practice the fundamentals, the basics, yes. and get really, really good at the basics. I've said this many times before. Like, you know, if you want to get good at basketball, practice dribbling, yeah. practice shooting, practice passing, then practice mixing them up. Right. So I, I think we're just so misguided in the way that we develop people in any realm towards expertise and the ability to do things differently. 
we tend to think that this concept cramming is the path, right. and it's not. It doesn't. It, uh, knowing something, it really isn't about what you know. It's about what you can do. 